Hi everyone, this is Oleg Tkach with NFM Lending and today is Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. And what I wanted to do today is talk about the market, specifically interest rates, and just want to chat about where they are now, where they were for the last 12 months, and the overall projections on what they're gonna be doing in you know 2021 between now and the end of the year. I just want to share this with all my referral partners, my past clients, my sphere. Uh, feel free to share this with everybody, anybody that you know that would have any interest in this. And so a year ago, I did a video just like this and I brought up a chart uh, specifically showing the mortgage-backed securities market and where and what it was doing at that time. And so I want to do that again for, for this video. And so here we have uh, what we're looking at is the uh, uh, mortgage-backed securities market mortgage bonds. And when you see mortgage bonds getting better, it means that rates are going lower. And when mortgage bonds are getting worse or, or going down, it means that rates um, inversely are going up. And so if we look at this time frame, which is for the last six months, what we're gonna see, um, as you can see here on this chart, is that rates are getting better, then they're getting worse, then they're getting better, and then they're getting worse. Now. I wanted to just kind of explain that before I took you to the two year, um, uh, you could say trading window. And I really wanted to kind of go into, you know, what happened before COVID and then, you know, what, what happened after COVID when it, when it came to rates and then where, where we are right now. So if you look back in November of 2019, rates were right, you know, depending on the day they were in the, uh, you know, let's say right here, r roughly around the 3.75 range, and then they went into you know the 4% range on a purchase, and then they were they were between you know the 3.75 to 4.125, 4.25 range, and then what we saw um, in the beginning of the year. Now this is still you know pre-COVID as far as it becoming you know you know, where lockdown started happening and everything else, but you started seeing that money started flowing into the bond market, which is which is what was driving rates lower. And you see the bond market improving, you know, to end of January, we started seeing rates in the mid, mid threes. And then this is right where, you know, you're looking at end of February, beginning of March. This is when you could say everybody went on lockdown and all the stay home orders were issued and all that. And we were right around the, you could say, mid three, you know, low three range, roughly around that level right here when you look right here. And then this is actually when I recorded the uh, uh, last year's video because then all of a sudden, this is when you had the stock market crashing, when you had everything, you know, changing daily and this is when rates were going I mean if you look at this period of time you see it going like this now this is not normal these swings right here were you know where you had days where rates were 3.5 and the next day they're at 4.5 the next day they're at 5 and the next day they're at 3.25 I mean it was this was a wild time and so what happened is um, you know, the government came in, stepped in, and they started buying all these mortgage bonds, which provided stability in the market, and it, it caused rates to go down. And what we saw last year was one of the lowest rate periods, uh, it was the lowest rate period that we've ever seen, and we started seeing rates go into the low three range, down to the, two, or down to the high twos, down to the mid twos, and overall, they were trending between 2.5 and the 2.75 range and the 2.5 range and, and all that. That's where we we're at right here. Now, at the same time, too, in the beginning of this year, and for those you know, people that were looking to refi or buy, since February, you know, if you ever got a, if you got a rate quote in February, now all of a sudden you look here, March 30th, you see quite a big difference in rates and, and what you see is really a major uh you could say drop in the market from as far as uh you know um, mortgage bonds go which uh inversely raised rates up and so right now when you look at back in you know the beginning of february till today you're looking at rates in you could say the the the, the mid twos to high twos to right now on a purchase you're looking at best case scenario 
you know, high twos, 2.875. On a refinance, you're looking at three, 3.125. And that's roughly where they're at right now on a 30 year fixed. Now, with that said, what is the pro projection, uh, you know, moving forward? You know, looking at the next six months, you know, let's just say summertime, rates are projected, this is projected to continue to, to, to uh, decline, which is gonna continue raising rates. Midsummer, they're projected to be in the mid three range. By the end of the year, the current projection is that we're probably gonna, you know, and probably gonna end up somewhere back in this level where they're gonna be 4%. So the current projection is that rates will be at 4% by the end of the year. Now, again, it is just a prediction based on what's going on right now. A lot of you are asking, you know, what's causing this? And what's causing it is inflation. Inflation is uh, right now the, the, you could say the biggest fear that people have in the market. And what, you know, when we're seeing, you know, home prices skyrocket and, and, and other things like, you know, the, the cost of, uh, you know, lumber, for example, when somebody's building home, right now is uh, twice as much uh, as what it was about a year ago. Um, and you see inflation happening because rates went down, which caused money to be, you could say, caused money to be a lot cheaper, have less value in it. The only way to fight inflation is to raise rates. And so that's what we're seeing in the market right now. And so um, if you're somebody that, let's just say, you know, you're holding off, you didn't refinance, and you're thinking about refinancing, if you have any intention to refinance in the next 12 to 24 months, the sooner you lock in, the better. As far as the rate ranges right now, if you have great credit, uh, you're looking at a 30 year fixed mortgage, you're looking at, you know, low threes, 3%. Three if, if you're looking at a, uh, you know, 20 year fixed, you're looking at in the high twos, uh, but you could still get yourself into the twos in a 15 year fixed, you're looking in the, uh, you could say in the uh, mid two range, uh, you know, roughly where rates are being offered uh, at this time. Now, at the same time too, if you're somebody that's purchasing a home, and this is something that I want to talk about, I'm gonna bring something else up here for, for the home buyers, is that you're gonna start seeing that home, you know, with rates going up, you're gonna see your buying power decrease quite a bit. And this is just kind of giving you an example of a purchase, um, I'm gonna give you an example of a uh, $500,000 purchase, and let's see, it looks like there's an error here, a $750,000 purchase. Um, this is what, what, what we're looking at. So, like just say you have a buyer that's buying for $500,000, and they bought best, best point in the market, and they, and, and they locked themselves into a 2.5% rate. Their monthly payment, with taxes, insurance, mortgage insurance, everything included was right around $2,534, roughly in that range, $2,500 range. Now that same buyer, if, if, if they're purchasing a home, same home, now the rates go up to 3.25%. Now all of a sudden their payment goes up about $190 a month to $2,725. At the same time too, let's just say they end up buying at the end of the year and rates are at 4% like they're projected to be. Let's just say that does happen. Um, now all of a sudden that same home is costing them $2,925 a month, a increase of $390. Now, in addition to that, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that if somebody's maxed out as far as, you know, if they're pre-approved and they're pre-approved for a maximum of $500,000, what that 4% rate does is it cuts their purchasing power down to 425,000. It pretty much will lower their, their buying power by $75,000. So um, what, what that's gonna mean to a lot of buyers out there that don't get in before rates go up is that they're gonna most likely not gonna be able to afford the type of home that they could afford uh, today. Now, if we take it to a $750,000 purchase price, what you see is, you know, if somebody bought at the best point in the market, their payment was with 5% down about 3,764. Um, you know, if, let's say rates are gonna be in the 3.25 range, they're looking at $4,050, a $285 increase in monthly payment. And uh, let's say rates do hit 4% like they're projected to hit, that same $750,000 home will cost them $4,350 a month, which is $586 more than at the, um, 
bottom of the, uh, of the market. So with that said, the one thing to take into consideration is uh, that's why we're seeing you know, a lot of the home prices right now, the, the super competitive market, you see, you're seeing home prices skyrocket, is because people that are out there searching, they're seeing the rate patterns, they're seeing them go up, and uh, they're trying to get uh, into contract and get a rate locked in uh, as soon as possible. So with that said, if uh, you're thinking about refinancing, if you want us to put together numbers for you or any of your friends or family, uh, all we need is a picture of your mortgage statement and we'll send you 30 year, 20 year and 15 year fixed options uh, for you to review and uh, see if it makes sense for you, see what the savings would be um, and, and, and decide if that's something you wanna do. Um, if you're a home buyer and you wanna know how much you qualify for, reach out. My team and I would be happy to see what you guys qualify for, um, what, what your maximum purchase price is and so forth. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. Um, again, keep in mind this is a prediction of what's going to happen in the market. No one truly knows as you know there could be economic changes that will completely change this in one way or another. And the one thing that we you know we all have you know no idea what's going to how it's going to impact is all the stimulus money that has been passed, how that is going to impact uh, uh, you know in the next 12, 24, 36 months how it's gonna impact inflation, which is gonna directly impact rates, which is gonna impact purchasing power, and so forth. So uh, with that said, if, you, if there's anything my team or I could do to help, reach out to us at 425-478-7676. Oleg Scotch, NFM Lending, hope you're having a great day, and I'll talk to you later.